بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Okay brothers we reached this lesson here <clears throat> which is regarding the evidences of al-ihsan so if you remember last week we uh, the sheikh he was explaining uh, al-ihsan and what it means um, and all the meanings attached to al-ihsan and it gives an understanding of that and now the sheikh is going to discuss um, the evidences with regard to what was mentioned in the previous lesson so the sheikh starts off by mentioning some ayah so we'll read through those and we'll read through the meanings of those in english uh from the translation of the meanings of the quran and then uh, just to give you a synopsis of what's going to happen then the sheikh's going to explain and do the tafsir give us the explanation of these ayahs and then we'll move on to evidences from the uh, narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. We'll try to complete as much as we can. It's a long lesson, but we only may get through half halfway through this lesson today, inshallah. So uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see how we get on. So the Shaykh says, Dalilu al Ihsan, the evidence of Al Ihsan. He says, What Dalilu Qawluhu Ta'ala and the evidence of uh, from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون وقوله تعالى وتوكل على العزيز الرحيم الذي يراك حين تقوم وتكلبك في الساجدين إنه هو السميع العليم وقوله تعالى وما تكون في شأن وما تتلو منه من قرآن ولا تعملون من عمل إلا كن عليكم شهودا إذ تفيضون فيه وما يعزب عن ربك من مثقال ذرة في الأرض ولا في السماء ولا أصغر من ذلك ولا أكبر إلا في كتاب مبين So let's go through the meanings of what we just read there from the Quran so the first ayah is from Surah An-Nahl. So let's go there, verse 128. Truly Allah is with those who fear Him, keep their duty, un- uh, duty unto Him, and those who are muhsinun, good doers. And then there's a reference to the footnote here. This is from Dr. Mohsin Khan translation. So there's a footnote, uh, and it says, see the footnote of verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 120. So uh, that's just an additional reference for that. For whoever wants to read on. Um, the next evidence is from Surah Al-Shu'ara. Let's go there. Surah Al-Shu'ara and the four verses from 217 to 220. And put your trust in the Almighty, the Most Merciful. Who sees you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you stand up alone at night for tahajjud prayers. And your movements among those who fall prostrate along, prostrate along with you to Allah in the five compulsory congregational prayers. Verily, he only he is the all-hearer, the all-knower. And then the Sheikh mentioned another evidence from... Surah to Yunus. So let's go to Surah to Yunus. This is a long ayah. So this is verse 
61 ayah 61 verse 61 whatever you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam may be doing and whatever portion you may be reciting from the quran and whatever deed you mankind may be doing good or evil we are witness thereof when you are doing it and nothing is hidden from your lord so much as the weight of an atom or small ant on the earth or in the heaven not what is less than that or what is greater than that but is written in a clear record and then there in there's a further reference here tafsir at-tabari volume 11 page 129 for whoever wants to read further tafsir at-tabari volume 9 page 129 so these are the evidences uh from the quran that the sheikh has mentioned uh here and he will explain so look up we are on point 47 so let's carry on inshallah so the Sheikh, he says, هَذَا دَلِيلُ الْمَرْتَبَةِ الْأُولَى مِنَ الْإِحْسَانِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَا الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مُحْتِنُونَ So just refer back to the ayahs that we read. So if you remember, the Sheikh mentioned uh, last week uh, that there are two levels to al-ihsan. So he mentions here that this, uh, the evidence that is quoted here, that this is the evidence for the first level. Yeah? Of al -Ihsan. And so he mentions part of the ayah Which if we just go back to I think it will be good to just remind ourselves So Let's go to The ayah Here That he mentions Inna Allah ma alladheena taqo wa alladheena hum muhsinoon Truly Allah is with those who fear him Keep their duty unto him And those who are muhsinoon Good doers Yeah and then the Shaykh says, وَهُمُ الَّذِينَ عَبْدُ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعْهُمْ مَعِيَّةٌ خَاسَةٌ مَعِيَّةٌ نُصْرًا نُصْرًا وَتَعْيِيدٌ وَالتَّوْفِيقٌ So then the Shaykh, he mentions here, in this sentence, he says that, and those are, those, those are the ones who worship Allah as, as if they can see Him. And indeed, Allah is with them. And He's with them specifically. And what does that mean? The Sheikh explains it here. He's with them in terms of his aiding and helping them and assisting them and, you know, giving them success. This is Allah is with them like that. And in obviously with, and in his knowledge and sight as well. Okay. So that's the meaning of with here. It's, it's not, um, uh, it doesn't mean that Allah himself in his essence is with them. Okay. <clears throat> so that's an important distinction to make here. So uh, the Shaykh, he goes on to say, وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْعَزِيزِ الرَّحِيمِ أَلَّذِي يَرَاكَ حِينَ تَقُومُ وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ هذا دليل المرتبة الثانية هذا دليل, قول, uh, هذا دليل قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ So let's go back. Let's just go back. Because just to remind us, we did read a lot of ayahs. So let's go to the ayah this is from <clears throat> surah, uh, surah yunus and put your trust uh, and put your trust in the almighty the most merciful who sees you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when you stand up alone at night for tahajjud prayers yeah and your movements among those who fall prostrate along with you to allah in the five compulsory congregational prayers yeah so, and then the Shaykh goes on to say that this ayah here is evidence for the second level of al ihsan Okay, uh, and this uh, and this is also the uh, and the evidence from the hadith of Jibril that the Shaykh mentioned last week, where the part of the hadith where it says for inna hu yarak that Allah for indeed He sees you, then this is the evidence for that as well. The second level from the point of view of the hadith. Okay. So the Shaykh is just going to break down uh, these ayahs for us and um, explain them. So in further detail, the Shaykh says, وَتَوَكُّلْ 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 i.e. he says, اَيْ فَوِذْ أُمُورُكْ So التَّوَكُّلْ, it means to put your trust in Allah. So, you know, trust your and trust your affair, your, your affairs, whether it's an affair or affairs, then entrust them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, put your trust in Allah. Yeah? Then the Shaykh says, Al-Aziz al-Rahim. So from that part of the ayah, Al-Aziz al-Rahim, 
the Shaykh says here, Wahu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that and Al Aziz al Rahim, it is referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yep. Hina taqum. And when you uh, uh, stand or prostrate taqum lil ibadah wa salah. So hina taqum here it refers to uh, when you when you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your prayer in terms of your, for example, your prayer. When you're praying your five daily prayers, for example. Wa taqallubaka fi sajideen. From the ayah again. The Shaykh says, Yaraka wa anta raqi wa anta sajid. Yaraka fi jami'i ahwal al-ibadati qa'iman. Wa rukka'an wa sajidan. Fahuwa yaraka subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Shaykh says here that that part of the ayah, Wa taqallubaka fi sajideen. It means that when you're moving through the movements of your prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you. He sees you prostrating. He sees you uh, bowing. Uh, you know, in all of those movements and conditions that you're in, in your prayer. Allah sees you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sees you. Let's move on. Innahu huwa samiul alim. Innahu huwa samiul alim. The Shaykh says, as samiu Al-Sami'u li-aqwalik, al-alimu bi-aqwalik. Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa qawluhu ta'ala wa ma takunu fi sha'nin wa ma tatlu minhu min Qur'anin wa la ta'amaluna min amalin illa kunna alaykum shuhudan idh tufiduna fih. Hatha dalilu al-martabat al-thaniya wa ma takunu fi sha'n. Hatha khitab lil-rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ayy sha'n min umurik. من أمور الإبادة أو من غيرها جميع أفعالك وتحركاتك ما تكون في شأن من الشؤون. Let's just take a pause. So the Sheikh mentions إنه هو السميع العليم. And indeed he is the all hearer, the all knower. Yeah. That and the Sheikh mentions he says Allah hears hears what you say, and Allah is all knowing with that which you say as well, yeah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Shaykh refers us back to the ayah he mentioned earlier. So let's go there. For Surah Yunus, mentioning here, whatever you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may be doing and whatever portion you may be reciting from the Qur'an and whatever deed you, mankind, may be doing, Good or evil, we are witness thereof when you are doing it. Yeah? Uh, and nothing is hidden from your Lord so much as the weight of an atom or a small ant on the earth or in the heavens. Yeah? So this is what the Sheikh just refers us back to. <clears throat> the Sheikh also says here in this paragraph that this is the evidence, this is also evidence for the second level of Ihsan. Uh <clears throat> And in terms of the affairs, what affair that's been talked about in the ayah, then this is uh, a speech to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi That Allah speaks to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, i.e. in any affairs from the affairs that he may be in, yeah, or dealing with. Um, whether that's uh, the affairs of worship or other than that. So all, the Shaykh says, all of your actions and your movements uh they are from those affairs. Then the Shaykh moves on and he says, وَمَا تَتْلُو مِنْهُ مِنْ قرآن. So obviously going back to this ayah, وَمَا تَتْلُو مِنْهُ مِنْ قرآن. What you recite from the Qur'an. I.e. the Shaykh says, مِنْ اللَّهِ مِنْ اللَّهِ لِأَنَّ الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ عز وجل أو الضمير راجع إلى الشأن أي ومن الشأن الذي تكون في تلاوة القرآن so the Sheikh says that uh, regarding the uh, recital of the Quran, and it's from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Azza Wa Jal, uh, um, or the Sheikh says, or oh, it's a pronoun here that's being mentioned that returns to the word Shan affair, i.e., from the affair which you may be in from reciting the Quran. Okay. Then the Sheikh says, moves on to the next part of the ayah. Says, "Wala ta'amalun." هَذَا لِجَمِيءِ الْأُمَّةِ لِلْرَسُولِ وَغَيْرِهِ وَلَا تَعْمَلُونَ So if you go back to the ayah where it says وَلَا تَعْمَلُونَ Let's go back and have a look where that is. وَلَا تَعْمَلُونَ 
Give me one second. Let me just try and find this. Anyway, going back to this. Uh, so in terms of the, the Shaykh mentions here, uh, this is being mentioned. If you refer back to the ayah earlier, this is being uh, this is mentioned to the Ummah and also to the Prophet Sallallahu as well and other than him. So to the Ummah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. Uh, and then min amal from deeds, whatever deeds that you uh, deeds that you might do, i.e. the Shaykh says, Amal min al-amal, khair or shar. So uh, any deeds that you might do from good or evil. Then the Shaykh mentions, Illa kunna alaykum shuhudan, narakum wa nabsurukum wa nushahidukum, hadha dhalil li qawli sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fa'inna wa yarak. So then in this part of the ayah, Illa kunna alaykum shuhuda, shuhudan, that whatever actions you do from good or bad, that they are witness, you know, that they are witnessed. Yeah, they are witnessed. And the Sheikh says, meaning that, uh, you know, you know, we see you. You know, we see you. We can see what you're doing. Uh, and we can view that. Yeah. And the Sheikh says that this is a, a evidence uh, of the speech of the Prophet in the Hadith of Jibreel, where he mentions, فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاك But indeed Allah, He, indeed He, i.e. Allah, He sees you. Yeah, and what you do. Then the Sheikh moves on. He says, "Wa il tu fi duna fihi." So the Sheikh says here, "Tu bashiruna hu wa taamaluna." For this, he gives the reason for the mertaba of the second from the mertaba of the Hassan, and that he Jalla Wala, a shahid on every action by action he sees Subhanahu wa Taala and he knows and he is sure. And he does not deny from him that Allah does not deny him anything on the earth or in the sky. Surah Al Imran. So, uh, in the ayah that's mentioned here, is to uh, is to fi duna fi. And the Sheikh mentions here, he says, meaning that uh, whatever actions that you do and the deeds that you carry out, whether they you know done quickly or whatever you do in terms of your actions, in a simpler way of saying it, then then this is the evidence. This is the evidence of the um, the second uh, level of al ihsan uh, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is witness Upon all of the actions That we do He sees us subhanahu wa ta'ala The actions that we do He sees them And nothing escapes his knowledge And sight Nothing escapes him As the Sheikh mentioned here And he mentions an ayah from Surah Al Imran So if we go there Let's have a look Surah Al Imran It was verse 5 إن الله لا يخفى عليه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء. Truly, nothing is hidden from Allah in the earth or in the heavens. Allah knows everything that's going on. Yeah, nothing escapes His knowledge, and nothing escapes Him. Then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, وَأَمَّا الْحَسَانَ بَيْنَ الْعَبْدِ وَالْخَلْقِ فَمَعْنَاهُ بَدْلَ فَمَعْنَاهُ بَدْلُ الْمَعْرُوفِ لَهُمْ وَكَفْ وكف وكف الأذى عنهم بأن تطعم الجاع وتكس العاري وتعين تعين بجاهك المحتاج وتشفع لمن احتاج الشفاعة تبذل المعروف جميع وجوه المعروف تكرم الضيف تكرم الجار لا يصدر منك إلا خير لجارك وتكف أذاك عنه أيضا فلا يصدر منك أذى له ولا لغيره من الناس من لا يصدر منه إلا أذى ومن الناس من يصدر منه أذى وخير ومن الناس من لا يصدر منه إلا خير فهذا في أعلى الطبقات. so let's just uh, translate that. so then the sheikh says as for doing good between the uh, between the servant and the and the creation, so obviously the Sheikh just discussed in terms of the iba ibadah. So what's between you and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that you do? Yeah. Now this is uh, al ihsan or doing good. Uh, what's between you and uh, other creations? So, for example, another person. So the Sheikh says here that the meaning of that is, uh, you know, doing lots of uh, good things, good actions. 
for example, gives us some examples. Uh, so giving, so doing lots of good actions and good deeds, and you know, uh, refraining from harming, yeah, others. So it gives us some examples um, in terms of good actions, like your uh, you feeding uh, the hungry, you clothing the naked, the ones who don't have clothes or who require more clothing, you aiding people uh, who are in need by way of your position, status, and your wealth. You interceding for those who require that intercession for whatever it may be. Therefore, you know, you are doing lots of good. And and this encompasses all the types of good. Further examples that the Sheikh mentions, um, you know, welcoming your uh, guest, uh, your guests, you know, uh, uh, and, you know, uh, being generous to your guests, uh, being generous to your neighbors, uh, and that nothing comes from you except good for your neighbors, and that you prevent yourself from harming your neighbors, etc., uh, and harming others. So then the Sheikh gives an example. He says that there's three types of people then. He mentions three types of characters then. He says they are from people that what comes forth from them except um, harm. So there's people that all you get from them is harm. There are people that all you get from them is good. And there are people that you get good and evil from. So you've got, on one side, you've got a person where all you get is evil and harmful things. Then you have another type of character where you get all that which is good. This person is always doing good. Yeah. And that's all you ever see from him. And then you have a person between those two characteristics. Yeah. A person who does good, but then he also does evil. Yeah. Uh, and the Sheikh says that the person that only does good or is in that state of all he does is good to the people and for himself and others, then this is the highest level or highest category, yeah, that you can reach in this situation that the Sheikhs mentioned. So the Sheikh says, بَضْلُ الْخَيْرِ لِلنَّاسِ وَكَفَ الْآذَ عَنْهُمْ هُوَ الْإِحْسَانِ لِلنَّاسِ وَأَحْسِنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ حَتَّى الْبَهَائِمْ يَجِبُ أَنْ تُحْسِنَ إِلَيْهَا بِأَنْ تُهِيئَ لِهَا لَهَا مَا تَحْتَاجِ إِلَيْهِ uh, so the Sheikh mentions here, he says, so doing lots of good to the people and preventing harm, you know, or prevent, preventing yourself from harming them, then this is what is called doing good to the people. And then the Sheikh mentions ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah. So if we go and have a look at the translation from Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, verse 195 Then if we look at the translation The meaning of that Mentions here And do good Truly Allah loves All the good doers Yeah So then the Sheikh says Up until the point Of animals That do good to the animals You know it's obligatory that We are good And do good To them And for them For example Preparing uh, what they require from food and etc. And other things the animals require, and preventing uh, harming them, and being soft and you know being good to them or being soft with them. This is from doing good. This is from alhasan to animals. Uh, up until the point of the one who uh, deserves to be killed. Don't the Sheikh says don't uh, punish him, except by uh, that he is killed or the or the uh, capital punishment 
is performed upon him uh, in the best manner, in the most comfortable way and in the best way. So the Sheikh says, so whoever it becomes obligatory that uh, there is a, what's called Al-Qisas, which is uh, equality in punishment in the Sharia, or whoever that it falls upon, it becomes oblo- uh, obligatory upon him, the capital punishment, but then indeed it should be executed in uh, the best way possible. And that's the best way to describe it here that the Sheikh is trying to say to us, in the best way possible, with lean, uh, being uh, lenient and uh, being soft, and um, uh, no sort of any uh, negative characteristics. So doing in the best way possible. Yeah, always. And that's going back to what the Sheikh said, al doing good. Okay. Then the Sheikh mentions, he says, قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَتَبَ الْإِحْسَانَ uh, uh, عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ فَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَحْسِنُوا الْقِتْلَى وَإِذَا ذَبَحْتُمْ فَحْسِنُوا الْذَبْحِ في القصاص أو غير ذلك مما يلزم الحد. So then the Sheikh says, and he mentions something from the speech of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He says that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, indeed Allah has made obligatory upon us as written for us alihsan doing good, being proficient and being good, doing good uh, upon everything that we do, being good at it and being proficient at it. So he says, so the, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if you kill, if you kill, then be good in that and be proficient in it. As in do it properly. Don't do it improperly. That's what it means. Do it properly and proficiently. And then the uh, Sheikh mentions the other part of the uh, hadith. If you, the, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you slaughter an animal, for example, then be proficient in slaughtering it. Yeah? And this uh, is both applies to um, in uh, the uh, equality of punishment, al-qisas, and also the capital punishment. <clears throat> this applies to both. <clears throat> then the shaykh continues in his fa'idha dhabahtum ay dhabahtum al-hayawanat al-ma'kula fa'asinu al-dhabha wa wali hidda ahadukum uh, شفرته وليريح ذبحته فتحسن حتى للبهائم وقد غفر الله للباغي uh, من بني إسرائيل بسبب أنها uh, سقت كلبا رأته يلحث من العطش فسكته فشكر الله فشكر الله لها فغفر الله لها ذنبها وهو ذنب عظيم وهو البغاء أي الزنا فغفر الله لها بسبب ذلك لأنها أحسنت إلى هذا البهيم الأطشان So then the Sheikh mentions so he just explains a bit further he says here that uh, if you uh, slaughter like an animal from the animals that are, uh, are edible animals that we allow the halal for us then do it proficiently and do it in a, a good manner in a proper way yeah and that's what he's saying so that's comfortable for the animal and that you do it properly and that you know everything that you do is in perfection and that applies to everything that we do so whatever job you do whatever it is we we always try to attain 100 percent perfection in what we're doing <clears throat> and then the shaykh gives an example i think we've all heard of this uh, uh, story as well uh, but just as a reminder that the uh, a lady uh, um um, an immoral lady uh, from the people of Israel, Bani Israel. Um, she um, she gave water to a dog that was panting with his tongue out. It was panting because it was thirsty and couldn't and it needed water. And there was no water, so she gave water to this dog. And because of that good action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thanked her for that and he forgave her sins the sin that she did i.e. and Anisa and it's, it's the uh, it's the major sins as well zina yeah fornication major sins but Allah forgave her and wiped her sins away because of that good action that she did 
So uh, uh, we should ponder over that. And that's the example that the Sheikh has given. So let's carry on. I won't read this because this bit he is mentioning the hadith that comes later. The Sheikh will mention it. So we will just carry on reading, inshallah, when we come across it. So the Sheikh, he says, um, فَكَيْفَ 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 بِغَيْرِ الْكَلْبِ إِذَا أَحْسَنْتَ إِلَى جَاءَ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَحَتَّى من بني آدم ولو كان كافرا إذا أحسنت إليه فإن الله جل وعلا يشكر لك ذلك الإحسان قال تعالى وأحسنوا إن الله يحب المحسنين So then the Sheikh says So in that example that the Sheikh gave about this lady this immoral lady who uh, Allah forgave her sins because she gave water to a thirsty dog then then what about, then the Sheikh says, what about um, if you did good, for example, to a hungry person from the Muslims, a hungry Muslim from the Muslims, or even if it was somebody from other than the Muslims, from Bani Adam, from the children of Adam, you know, whether it be a, a disbeliever, for example, if you did good to this person, but indeed Allah Jalla Wala will thank you for that good deed and uh, the good doer that you are and that you did in the action good doing action of good good doing and then the sheikh mentions the ayah again wa ahsinu inna allaha yuhibbul muhsinin meaning that uh, it's a, a verbal command so do good do good but indeed allah loves the good doers so that's what we should aspire inshallah to be yeah all the time inshallah then the sheikh says and no thalithu وهو إتقان العمل أي عمل أي عمل تعمله يجب عليك أن تتقنه لا ليقال إن إن فلانا يحسن كذا وقد جاء في الحديث إن الله يحب إذا عمل أحدكم عملا أن يتقنه. So concluding here the Sheikh says and then the second or uh, the third type and now the fourth the third type. Uh, is in terms of ihsan, it is the Sheikh mentions here that you be proficient in your in your amal, that you be proficient in your actions and what you do, i.e. So if you did something, be proficient in it. It is obligatory upon you to be proficient in it. Not to say that oh you know such and such a person, fulan, such and such a person, oh he's good at this and that. It's not for that purpose. But rather, uh, it came in the hadith. And this uh, uh, is uh, that came in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the, uh, where he mentioned, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that indeed Allah loves a person if he does something that he does it proficiently. So, what what's the purpose then? and intention. The intention is uh, for us to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa taala. That we be proficient in whatever we do, whether it's your job, you're doing a job, you, you're proficient at it, and whatever you do. Do your best and try to be and be proficient at it. So we reach point forty eight now. So قد تقدم الكلام عن الإسلام والإيمان والإحسان وأركان كل مرتبة وذكر الشيخ رحمه الله أدلة كل مرتبة من القرآن وهذا كل كله تقدم وانتهى. ثم ذكر الشيخ رحمه الله دليل هذه المراتب من السنة. سنة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم فذكر حديث جبريل فذكر حديث جبريل وأنه أتى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو مع أصحابه أتاهم في سورة رجل وجلس إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وسأله عن الإسلام والإيمان والإحسان ثم سأله عن الساعة وسأله عن آماراتها هذا ما يسمى بحديث جبريل أو حديث أمرا وهو حديث ورد uh, ورد من uh, 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 ورد من عدة طرق عن جماعة من الصحابة فهو حديث فهو حديث صحيح وذكر الشيخ رحمه الله رواية رواية عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه في هذا الحديث ما اختلاف في ألفاظ الحديث في طرق أخرى ولكن المعنى واحد so the Sheikh says in this paragraph here, 
starting with point 48, he says, so the speech regarding al-Islam and al-Iman and al-Ihsan, it's, uh, it's previously mentioned. It's already mentioned, we've covered that. And, you know, the pillars as well with regards to all of these levels of uh, uh, regarding al-Islam, al-Iman and al-Ihsan. And the Shaykh also, may Allah have mercy upon him, mentioned the evidences for all of these levels. Yeah, from the Quran. And all of this, we have covered now. It's in the past. We've done it. We've covered it and discussed it. The Shaykh says now, the Shaykh, the original author, may Allah have mercy upon him, mentions the evidences of all of what we've discovered, uh, discussed already from the levels uh, of Al-Islam, Al-Iman, Al-Ihsan, from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu So now that we've covered the evidences from the Quran, we move on to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, and his narrations and the evidences from his Sunnah. So then the Shaykh says that uh, the Hadith of Jibreel is mentioned, as we've mentioned a few times now, the Shaykh mentioned about the Hadith of Jibreel, as we know. Yeah, the Hadith of Jibreel. So he explains, he says, that he came, Jibreel came to the Prophet Sallallahu in the company of the Sahaba. They were there as well. And Jibreel, alayhi salam, he came to the Prophet Sallallahu in the form of a man. And he sat next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asked him about Al-Islam and he asked him about Al-Iman and he asked him about Al-Ihsan. Then he asked him about the hour, i.e. the day of judgment. He asked him about the hour and then he asked him about the signs of the hour. Yeah? And the Sheikh says this is what is called or famously well known as Hadith of Jibreel, as mentioned previously, yeah? Or it's also known as the Hadith of Umar. So you either hear it with the name of Hadith of Umar or Hadith of Jibreel. <clears throat> so the Sheikh says that this Hadith, <clears throat> it, was, <clears throat> it was brought and narrated uh, from a number of uh, uh, narrations or uh, from a, you know, a number of different routes. And uh, you know, there's a, a group uh, from the group of the Sahaba. So therefore, that this hadith is sahih and authentic. And the Shaykh, Rahmahullah, the original author, he mentions the riwayah of Umar ibn al-Khattab. And in it, in this hadith, there are some minor differences in the wording. However, the meaning is the same. So that's the important thing. That there are some slight differences in the wording, but the meaning is the exact same between the two different types yeah, of roots of this hadith. Um, so that's just an extra benefit for us. Yeah? So that's what the Shaykh has said. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, قَالَ بَيْنَمَا نَحْنُ جُلُوسُ جُلُوسٌ إِنَّ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كَانَ مِنْ عَادَتِهِمْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ أَنَّهُمْ يَجْتَمِعُونَ عِنْدَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ وَيَتَلَقَّوْنَ عَنْهُ الْعِلْمِ وَيَسْتَمِعُونَ إِلَىٰ أَجْوِبَتَهِ إِلَىٰ أَجْوِبَتِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم على ما يرده من الأسئلة فبينما هم كذلك على عادتهم إذ دخل عليهم رجل من الباب رجل شديد بياض الثياب شديد سواد الشعر أي أن جبريل عليه السلام تمثل في سورة هذا هذا الرجل ولم يأتيهم بسورته الملكية لأنهم لا يتيقون النظر إليه في سورته الملكية نعم so then the sheikh says he starts to explain this uh, and uh, uh, explain the um, hadith now so the sheikh says he said while we were sitting while we were sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that was from the Shaykh says and that was from their custom and their habits uh, may Allah uh, be pleased with them all the Sahaba that they used to gather around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the masjid and they used to take knowledge from him and learn from him and they used to listen to uh, uh, the answers uh, that he would answer from the people 
who would ask him questions regarding affairs of the deen. And so they were there learning and they would be uh, with the Prophet Sallallahu So while they were upon that um, habit, um, a man entered the masjid, a man entered upon them, I entered through the door, it was one of the doors of the masjid. And there was a man in this description, a man um, that had, that his thobe, his cloth, his cloth, the cloth that he was wearing, it was severely white, clean, as you can imagine, clean, white. And his hair was very black, severely black, dark, maybe you could say jet black, for example. And, uh, uh, and that is, the Sheikh says that is Jibreel alayhi salam. He came in the form of a man. And he didn't come in the in his original form. Why? Because as mentioned previous, in the previous week, that the angels were not able to see them in their original forms in this dunya. So they, he came in the form of a man. Then the, we go move on to point 49. The Sheikh says, لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرف, لا يعرفه منا أي من الحاضرين أحد فهذا من العجائب أنه ليس قادما من سفر من سفر حتى يقال إنه من غير أهل المدينة وهم لا يعرفونه وهو ليس من أهل البلد حتى يعرفوه تحيروا في شأنه لا هو قادم ولا هو من أهل البلد لو كان قادما من سفر لظهر عليه أثر السفر في ثيابه وفي لونه لأن المسافر تظهر عليه آثار السفر فلا يعرفه أحد من الحاضرين فليس هو من أهل البلد وليس هو قادم من سفر فمن أين يكون هذا الرجل هذا الذي استغربوه So then the Shaykh continues he says he says point 49 he says and you couldn't when, when Jibreel came in this form of a man in that description that I mentioned in the previous paragraph you couldn't see that uh, the man had traveled there was no signs of travel upon him. And he was not known to the people of Medina. So he wasn't from Medina. And so that startled that startled uh, the people who were there from the Sahaba. They, they thought, they knew, okay, we don't recognize this man. He's not local to us from our city. And neither, we can't tell whether he's traveled because there's no signs of travel upon him. As, guys, as you guys know, remember when you're traveling uh, in those days, how travel was. Also, if, for example, you're traveling in a plane, you have had a long flight, you know, uh, you're going to look a bit disheveled, you know, you need to probably have a shower or, you know, clean up. You can see the uh, the effects of travel on you and some of those that you've traveled. Yeah. So, so, so uh, this is what startled them. They were like, we don't know who this is. We don't know. We don't recognize this person from the local people. Neither can we say that he's traveled because there's no signs of travel. So we can't say whether he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a foreigner who's come from a different town, city or country, for example. So they were a little bit startled and, and, and this affair had a kind of, uh, it, was a, it was a strange to them, yeah? It was strange to them. So then the Shaykh says, فَجَلَسَ إِلَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ جُلُوسَ الْمُتَعَلِّمِ مِنْ, مؤل, uh, من مُؤَلِّمِهِ So then the Shaykh says that he sat next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like, you know, like how a, a teacher and the student are sitting next to each other. Yeah, this is commonly in Islamic circles. You see this teachers, students sitting next to each other like this. Uh, the Sheikh says, وَأَسْنَ دَ رُكْبَتَيْهِ إِلَى رُكْبَتَيْ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم أي أنه قريب منه جدا. So he sat, Jibreel, he sat and he sat with him in such a way that he was so close to him that his knees were touching the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's knees. This is how close he was to him, how he sat next to him. Very close, close to him. The Sheikh says, وَوَضَعْ يَدَيْهِ أَلَى فَخِذَيْهِ أَيْ فَخِذَيْهِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم And Jibreel put his hands on the thighs of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So he, he was sitting like this, you can picture this. He was sitting like this. So then he said, the Sheikh says, he said, فَقَالَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ خَاطِبْهُ بِاسْمِهِ وَلَمْ يَقُلْ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَلَأَلَّهُ فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ من أجل أن يظن الصحابة أنه من أهل البادية لأن من من عادة أهل البادية أنهم 
يخاطبون النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم باسمه لأن أهل البادية على طبيعتهم وعادتهم وهو زيادة في الإغراب وتعمية حتى لا يعرفوا So then the Shaykh, he says here that, uh, then he said, so Jibreel, alayhi salam, he said, he said, Ya Muhammad, he called him by his name, his first name. He, 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 he called upon him by his first name. He said, uh, but he didn't say, Ya Rasulullah. And the Shaykh said, this is, uh, the reason for this is because, uh, um, because he didn't, um, because he was a stranger to them. Of course, to, uh, to the Sahaba, and he resembled uh, the people of, um, uh, you know, the desert, the uh, uh, the outer areas, you know, like the countries, the the villages, the outer areas, uh, like the Bedouins. So he resembled uh, their habits uh, because they are customary to calling people by their name just directly. And then the Sheikh continues. He says, "Qala," he said. Ya Muhammad, akhbirni an al-Islam. Ay, ishrah li ma'an al-Islam. So then, Jibreel, he said to them, he said, he said to the Prophet, he said, Ya Muhammad, inform me about Islam. Ay, explain to me the meaning of al-Islam. Then he said, Qala al-Islam an tash, uh, an tashhada an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammadun Rasulullah wa tuqeem al-salah wa tu'ti al-zakah wa tasum ramadan wa tahajju al-bayt wa tahujj al-bayt so then the Shaykh says that he replied, the Prophet ﷺ replied, he said, Al-Islam is that, as mentioned in previous lessons, Al-Islam is that you testify that none has the worthy, uh, none has, uh, none is worthy of worship in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Muhammad ﷺ is the messenger of Allah. And that you establish the prayer and that you give your zakat obligatory charity and that you fast the month of Ramadan and that you make pilgrimage to the house, the, the Kaaba, if you are able to do so. And this was mentioned previously, remember, in the other lessons. So then the Shaykh says that, he says, ذَكَرَ لَهُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْإِسْلَامِ أَلَتِي لَا بُدَ مِنْهَا وَلَتِي إِنْ تَحَقَّقَتْ وَوُجِدَتْ تَحَقَّقَ الْإِسْلَامِ تَحَقَّقَ الْإِسْلَامِ وَمَا زَادَ عَلَيْهَا مِنُ الْأُمُورَ الْأُخْرَى فَهِيَا مُكْمَلَاتِ مكملات. فالرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم اقتصر على بيان أركان الإسلام لأن الجواب كلما كان مقتصرا كان أسهل على متعلم والسامع وسهل, وسهل عليه حفظه ووعيه بينما لو طول الجواب تشعب على حاضرين وربما أن أكثرهم لا يستوعبه فهذا دليل على أن المسؤول ينبغي أن يتو... أن يتوخى الاختصار مهما استطاع آ... آ... و... ويقتصر على... على الشيء الضروري وإلا فالإسلام أكثر من ذلك هذه أركانه ودعائمه التي آ... يقوم عليها So then the Sheikh mentions here and uh, we'll, we'll stop in a couple of minutes because we're going past an hour now So the Sheikh mentions here that the answer that the Prophet ﷺ gave, it was, uh, uh, he, exp he gave the a simple, straightforward answer, and it has benefits. And it was a short answer and a summary answer. Why? Because it covers the five pillars of Islam. And also at the same time, that for the people who are listening, the students, the people who are learning, uh, and don't know about this, then it's easy for them to memorize and to understand, and it doesn't cause any confusion for them. So, and, and this is a, a way of, of learning. Yeah, so you start with basics and then you build upon them. Yeah, this is what the Sheikh mentioned. Then the Sheikh says that Jibreel he said, "Qala sadaqt hadi ajiba ajiba tun thaniya." Then the Sheikh says that the that Jibreel alayhi salam when the Prophet alayhi salam answered him, he replied to him and he said, "That's correct. That that's true. That's correct. You've answered correctly." And this uh, stunned the uh, Sahaba because they never they don't know this person who's come and he's asking the Prophet Sallallahu questions and saying yeah you're right so this is what startled them yeah then the Shaykh he says Qala fa, fa lahu wa 
فدل على انه عالم وانه لا يسال سؤال جاهل وانما يسال هو هو عالم بدليل انه قال صدقت فدل على انه عالم فلماذا يسال so then the sheikh says he says uh, then uh, from the hadith of uh, umar uh, he said that this startled us and amazed us he's asking and then he's saying yeah you're right so he's asking the question and then he's saying oh yeah you're right that's right what you've said so then the sheikh says that this uh, demonstrates uh, it, it demonstrated to the sahaba that this person who's asking the prophet sallallahu and then saying yeah you're right he's actually knowledgeable he's alim he's knowledgeable he's asking a question and he's not ignorant about the answer and rather he's asking and he knows about it and that's the evidence for that and that when he says sadaqt because he said oh yeah you 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 you've uh, told her uh, the truth and this demonstrates that the person who's asking uh, these questions ai jibril is he's he's uh, he's alim he's knowledgeable and then he startled them why because he said well if he knows why is he asking for yeah so then Okay, we're almost there. Bear with me five minutes, brothers. Then we'll just, I wanted to finish at point 52, which is just here. So uh, just bear with me, brothers. Five more minutes, inshallah. Then the Sheikh says, Qala akhbirni an al-Iman. Qala an tu'mina billahi wa malaikati wa kutubi wa rusulihi wa al-yawm al-akhiri wa tu'mina bil-qadri khayri wa sharrihi fa dhakra lahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arkana al-Iman al-sita ba'da ma dhakra lahu arkana al-Islam wa al-Islam wa al-Iman idha dhakra جميعاً فالإسلام معناه الأعمال الظاهرة والإيمان هو الأعمال الباطنة أعمال القلوب وما يقوم به من التصديق والعلم ولا بد من الإسلام والإيمان جميعاً الإسلام الأعمال الظاهرة والإيمان الأعمال الباطنة لقول صلى الله عليه وسلم الإسلام على نية والإيمان في القلب فإن فإن ذكر فإن ذكر ذكر جميعاً صار لكل واحد معنى خاصا به واذا ذكر واحد منهما دخل في الاخر اذا اذا ذكر الايمان وحده دخل في الاسلام واذا ذكر الاسلام وحده دخل في الايمان لانه لا يصح اسلام بدون ايمان ولا يصح ايمان بدون اسلام لا بد من ال... من الاثنين فهما متلازمان ولهذا يقولان يقولون إن الإسلام والإيمان من الأسماء التي إذا اجتم إذا اجتمعت اقترق افتر افترقت وإذا وإذا انفردت اجتمعت أي يدخل بعضها في بعض لأنهما متلازمان لا ينفك أحدهما ولا ينفك أحدهما عن الآخر فسأله عن الأعمال الظاهرة والأعمال الباطنة وبين له أركان كل من الإسلام والإيمان so uh, let's just explain that and then we finished, inshallah. So then uh, the Sheikh, uh, he explains to us and we translate what he said. So then he said, the Jibreel said, Akhbirni, inform me then, inform me about Al-Iman. So he's, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu answered him, he said, <coughs> that you believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the angels and the books, the, the revealed books and the messengers and uh, the last day and that you believe in the uh, pre <coughs> uh, in, in the qadr of Allah, the good of it and the evil of it, i.e., uh, what Allah has preordained, yeah, uh, for everything. So then the Sheikh says that he mentions uh, that he, he answered and he, and he mentioned, so I said, he mentioned the uh, the six pillars of Al Iman as we studied last week and the week before, uh, uh, after he had mentioned the pillars of Al Islam and Al Islam, the Sheikh meant this is important here. We need to just pay attention here to understand this very important point the Sheikh makes here. He says, Al-Islam and Al-Iman, if they are mentioned together, then Al-Islam, its meaning is to do with the action, the outward actions. If they met, if Al-Islam and Iman are mentioned together in the same sentence or the same context uh, or in the same breath, um, then it means, then Al-Islam means your apparent actions that you do that people see and then the sheikh says and iman itself al iman it is uh, and then iman means in this situation also al iman means the actions of your heart that in your you know that unseen uh, the, the actions of your heart so al iman means and the sheikh says here and then the sheikh continues he says it's obligatory and it's incumbent that al islam and al iman uh, 
uh, are together, yeah, that they, uh, that that they, that they exist together in this in this uh, uh, context. Then the Sheikh he says here, Al Islam are the outwardly apparent actions, and the Al Iman is the actions of the heart, the hidden actions that only you know inside your heart, yeah. Uh, uh, with regards to the speech of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he mentions Al-Islam Alaniya wal Iman Fil Qalb that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he said Al-Islam is what's outward and apparent and Al-Iman is what's in the heart yeah so then the Sheikh says if if they are mentioned together if all of like Al-Islam and Al-Iman are mentioned together then the uh, the meaning is uh, is become specific to it yeah is specific, like mentioned above. But the Sheikh says, if it is, if one of them is mentioned, then the other one enters as well in its meaning. So the Sheikh says, for example, if Al Iman is mentioned itself, then Islam enters that. And if Islam is mentioned by itself, then Iman enters that as well. He says because Al Islam is not correct except without Iman. And vice versa, you have to have Islam and Iman for you to for your belief to be upright, right? Yeah, and for you to be upright in your deen, in your religion. So therefore, they both, you know, have to. They they are together. They can't exist one without the other. Yeah. So the Sheikh says. So in indeed, he says, Al Islam and Al Iman are from the nouns which uh, the if they uh, uh, if they if they got they gather. They gather, they gather, and if they are not, then they are split. Yeah, that's what he's saying. So he says, "Ijtamat if tarqat." Yeah, so he says, "He says here, 'An al in al Islam wal Iman min al Asma alati idh ijtamat if tarqat." Yeah, um, and then the Sheikh goes on to say, "Why them faradat ijtamat? Ay yadkhul baadha fi baad li anna huma mutalaziman." So the Sheikh just mentioned here what he mentioned above. He's saying that one can't be without the other. The meaning of Islam, it can't be without the meaning of al- 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 Iman. They are together. Yeah, they exist together. Yeah? And they stick together and they exist together. The other one, it can't separate from the other. They can't separate from each other. So then the Sheikh says, here, فَصَالَهُ عَنِ الْأَعْمَالِ الظَّاهِرَ So then he was asked about, the Sheikh says that the Prophet was asked about uh, the, uh, the outward apparent actions and also the actions of, uh, the inner actions, as, as in the actions of the heart. And he clarified, so Islam, the Prophet Islam clarified uh, 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 all the pillars from Al Islam and Al Iman. So, inshallah, uh, we'll stop there uh, and we'll continue uh, the rest of this lesson because we've only reached half, it's a long lesson. So, we've reached point 52, which I was aiming to get to, alhamdulillah. Now we've gone over uh, about 10 minutes, so I apologize. But, inshallah, uh, we'll continue uh, around about the same time. Uh, next next week, I'll send you a text, inshallah, with the timing. And you can check the group if there's any change in time, you should see it there. بارك الله فيكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت وأستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته